This is a quick start video for Framer for SketchUp. First of all, this is what the user interface looks like. This is the menus, so forth. So let's take a look at the, we have a wall tool, we have the door tool for adding a door opening, we have a window tool for adding a window opening, we have individual lumber tool, we have a blocking tool to add blocking in between studs. There's reporting and configuration of materials, as well as help, which will take you to a PDF guide. So let's just take a look at the basic wall tool. So this is the user interface. You can choose from a rectangular wall, a shed wall, or a gable wall. Uh, most often we're just a rectangular wall, but if you insert a roof slope down in here, and you're doing either a shed wall, which is a single taper, or a gable, which is a double taper, uh, you can choose from those uh, types of walls. You can choose from various sections of walls, and these are completely customizable in the user configuration. So for now, I just have some that come preloaded. Some of these would never happen, but uh, it's just a variety of wall sizes, but you can certainly change those and customize them. Uh, bottom plates, you can choose from either having a, a single bottom plate or double bottom plate treated or double treated. And in this case, we have concrete here, so we would be using a treated plate with the bottom plate. Uh, top plates can be single or double or none. Now the start and end post conditions, the start and end conditions are for choosing which type of corner you want to use. Framer does one wall at a time. That's the way we build. We may have various wall heights or various end conditions. So we're going to be doing one wall at a time and choosing which condition we want to start and end with. And then we have wall board. Um, it's not called exterior and interior. It's right and left because you may have an interior wall that has drywall on both sides. You may have an exterior wall that has sheathing on the outside and drywall on the inside. So it depends on whether you're heading in the right or left direction. I tend to go um, around a building counterclockwise and we'll show you that. And then the offsets are for extending, basically like pushing and pulling sheathing or drywall to uh, connect to a corner. And I'll show you that as well. Uh, you have various types of wall types that come of well, sheathing that comes with. Um, there's drywall, of course. Now I have 48 and 54. If any of you build with nine foot walls, you may use 54 inch drywall boards to have one seam. And this is a way of telling, uh, this is a way of working with Estimator for SketchUp. So everything you do in Framer will work with Estimator for SketchUp uh, if that's part of your workflow. But I've got Dens Glass, uh, OSB, plywood, or zip. And uh, let's just go with OSB for this, this case. And you can choose your thickness, and this is all, again, customizable. So we're going to say we're going to put some half-inch OSB on the outside. Um, on the inside, we could add drywall, but I'm, for right now, I'm just going to leave that off to show you the framing. And you choose your stud spacing and your wall height that defaults to 9 foot 1 and an eighth, but you can change that to whatever height you want. And roof slope is going to be a rectangular wall, so we don't have the slope. Now we're going to model our first wall, and I'm going to be starting from this corner heading over to the opposite corner. So my right hand side is where I'm going to have the OSB. That's the exterior. And I'm going to start out with, I'm going to use California corners on this, but these are the different uh, end and start um, types of configurations. You have one stud, you have two studs conventional, which is going to be a space for a nailer. You're going to have two studs California, which is like an L uh, left and right. And then you have a solid three studs, or you can have a T post, and which I'll show you that in a minute. So in this case, on the left-hand side, as I'm going, I'm modeling to the right. So on the left-hand side, I want a California corner on both the start and the end condition. And then I'm just going to start on my framing. Now you notice it's creating a 2D outline. If I hit tab, it jumps to the other side of the line. If I hit tab again, it's assuming I want to go from the exterior of the sheathing, but I'm going from the uh, framing line. Tab again, jumps on the other side of the line, tab once more, and I'm back to where I started. So it looks like it's going to be fitting okay. And I just choose the other end, and I've got my wall. Okay, and if you go to the inside, you'll see I've got a California corner there, and I started out with a California corner here and all my studs in between. And then if I want to add a window, the, I've got two windows in here. So let's look at the window tool. This is the interface in here. So I've got a two by four wall. So I'm going to do a double and I'm going to say a two by 10. Again, this list of header sections is completely customizable. And I'm going to I'm put a two by four on the top and bottom of that header. That's an option. 
I could add multiple sill plates. I could add multiple jacks if I get into wider openings. Um, and in this case, the first window, I'm going to say it's a CW25, which is four foot eight and a half. It's five feet tall and 611 header heights. Okay. I'm going to click here and I'm going to select, see how it turns green outline. If I hit tab, it's going over for right justification and it's red because it won't fit. If I hit tab again, it's left justification. But since I've got this midpoint already located, I'm just going to click on that and hit enter because I could add multiple openings, but I'm going to hit enter to, to lock that into execute. So if I go to the inside, you'll see I've got two two by 10 headers and all the jacks and cripples and everything. Uh, let's go ahead and add this other window. In this case, we have a little C135 and that one is 24 by three foot five tall. And I will click here and enter. And now I have both of those openings. If I wanted to at any time, I can right click on that wall, edit frame or wall. We could, for instance, add half inch drywall if we wanted to and it's going to be adding the drywall. And notice that it's creating layers for you with every type of wall that you do. And it's breaking out the different wall materials. For instance, we have regular plates, the two by four, and we have treated plates that are two by four. We have the drywall, we have the sheathing, and we have the header material. So all the materials that were included in that, as well as the studs, and the studs are going to be specified by the height of the wall. All of this is done so I can use uh, estimator for SketchUp. So uh, that's a way of breaking out these items uh, in order to be able to generate takeoffs. So these layers are automatically created for you. Okay. Uh, for right now, I'm going to just cut off my drywall layer just so we can be seen framing. All right. So let's do the next wall. Now, this is where the offsets come into play. So let's say that in this case, now we're going to just start out with one stud. And we're going to still end with the left hand uh, corner. But I want that, I'm going to be starting right here in this corner. So I want the sheathing to overlap this wall. So we have three and a half inch stud and a half inch sheathing. So I'm going to make the start offset to pull out at four inches. So it's a positive four inches because I want to pull that sheathing to out flush with here. The other side is fine to be flush at the end. And I'm going to click OK and click and click. Okay, and now you see how that sheathing overlapped. And we could do that same thing now that we've got that same wall type. We could come down from here to here. Okay, so now that we've got uh, these walls going, let's say that what if we wanted to do this wall as a gabled wall? Let's say we had a gabled here, a gable wall here, and we wanted to balloon frame that. So here's a couple of, of um, items to show you. Uh, in, in one shot here. So let's say that that wanted to be a gable wall. I'm going to delete this wall by hitting erase or delete. Now this wall here, I want that wall to come all the way to the end because I want the gable wall to go in between. If I was to right click on this wall and say edit framer wall, uh, the first thing I want to do is I want the, the uh, start post to be a California corner left. And then I want to uh, have the sheathing be flush. I don't need that offset. So I'm going to put back to zero. All right, now I'm going to do that and now. But the other thing is I want this to extend over here to the end. So when I right click and I can say move or resize frame a wall, this is very important because you can't just move a wall using SketchUp's move tool. The framer knows where it is in the coordinates of the SketchUp uh, world. So you can't just, um, you know, move or, or alter or adjust. You have to use the tool that's provided with Framer. So we're going to click on move or resize Framer wall. And see, I've got these little grips in here that I can just click on it and pull it to this edge. And when I hit enter, it's moved it out there for me. Okay. So now we got the perfect little uh, issue or condition where we're going to add a gable wall. So now what we'll do is we'll click on the wall tool and we'll go gable. And uh, let's say it's a 12-12 uh, pitch. So I'm going to say 12 colon 12, or I could put 45 degrees in there. So when I click OK, but the, also before I do that, I want the, the sheathing to overlap on both sides. So in this case, I want the start to pull six inches, and I want the other end to pull six inches, or excuse me, four inches. Six inches would be for a two by six wall. All right, and then when I click OK and I choose from this point 
to this point. Now I've got my gabled wall and the sheathing, sheathing overlapped and the studs go up full height. Now one important thing to notice is that now I've got a new layer for the studs that's wall stud 2x4, 15 foot and 3 eighths. What it is is that's the peak of this. Again, this is for estimator. If you're not using, uh, if you're not worried about getting a takeoff, then this really won't affect you. But I would not want to order nine foot studs for this wall because um, they're varying heights. So it defaults to the tallest section of the wall, and that way the estimator can make the choice. Well, I would, since it's 15 feet tall, I would just figure each one of these to be a 16 footer that it that it cuts out of, um, just for ordering purposes. So that gives you a, a quick idea of how to use Framer. Now, uh, when you go to an interior wall, uh, notice that we've got, uh, we'll just do one interior wall here. So on this interior wall, I'm gonna cut off the drywall, excuse me. Uh, I'm gonna cut off this OSB because we don't want any sheathing. We could do drywall, but I'm just leaving it off for representation here. We don't need any offsets, but I'm gonna start out with a T-post. And I'm gonna end with a solid three studs. All right, we don't have any roof slope and we're back to a rectangular wall. Now when I go into here and I start here and I end up here, you'll notice that it put in the T-post for drywall on either side. One thing you will note is that this original wall had a stud right there, so we have some overlap. There's no way of uh, in Framer for this wall to be smart enough to realize it needs to take that one stud out. So you could either manually edit that wall or just leave it in. It's not affecting anything and it just gives you one more stud for waste. Uh, so that's one of the limitations, okay? And so that's, that's Framer as far as framing walls. If you wanna configure your materials, when you open this up, you'll see you've got all these different items that you can, uh, that you can create and select. Um, these are where you can add different types of wall boards, You've got 18 sections of headers that come with it, 39 metric sections. This is where you can add and choose um, to customize as you wish. For instance, if I was to expand on the uh, header selection, you can see I've got all these headers that are in here. And uh, if I wanted to edit that, this is where you can put your nominal size and your actual size. Since obviously there's a huge difference there uh, with Imperial that you're going to have nominal dimensional lumber that we know by ordering. For instance, a two by four is actually an inch and a half by a three and a half. So that's why we give you this nice uh, section of columns in here. And you can choose what material that you want to texture it with, um, and then add as many sections or delete sections as you wish. And then you just simply at the bottom, save and save, and you'll have your new customized uh, wall components. So that's Framer for now. Thank you for watching and uh, let us know if you have any questions. Thanks.